What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Before we get started, I want to express how fun it's been for me to get back into these Wi-Fi vids. It really feels like the good old days. Um, and it's been really fun for me to even like see everybody's comments and all the support has been amazing. Uh, with that being said, make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoy it. It does actually really help out the channel and uh, I greatly appreciate it. Anyway, check out the squad that we are using today, boys. This is the absolute dream team. We've got... 50% the Sharpedo, we got Dick Pinch, we got Titty Milk, we got Sup the Muck, uh, we got Thug Trio, along with last but not least, obviously, Frostitude. I, I'm going back to a lot of the really old Pokemon that I used to use, and we're going to try to see if we can if we can beat some people who are bringing some more, you know, high-powered teams. Anyway, my opponent has definitely a very scary team. He's working with some, uh, some pretty big threats, like he's got the Speed Boost Blaziken, he's got an Espeon over there, Lucario. Uh, it, it actually looks like a pretty fun matchup here, though, so... He's going to lead off with the Hippowdon as I lead off with the Titty Milk. The return of the Titty, boys. <laughs> I got the Shining Mil Mil Tank. He's got that got that Blueberry Milk, which you know about that. Um, so this thing sets up the Sand Stream, which is just mostly annoying. I'm expecting this thing to probably just be Stealth Rock lead. Uh, I decided to go with the Mil Tank lead just because I want to get my rocks up. It's going to be pretty helpful for uh, limiting switch-ins. I know he actually has that Espeon in the back. He could have switched directly into the Espeon and gotten the Magic Bounce. But I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm going to end up getting my rocks up, and he's going to get rocks up on me anyway. So I just went for the stealth rock there, as he actually just ended up staying in. Now, this matchup isn't really great for either of us. Uh, we're both definitely defensive walls, as, you know, we can't really touch each other and do that much damage. I don't have anything I can really switch into here on an Earthquake, so I'm thinking I probably have to stay in here with Miltank. Uh, Miltank doesn't look especially useful for this matchup either, so I kind of wanted to just lead with this thing and make sure I get my stealth rock. Um, I can definitely take some hits from some things, but I'm just going to go right for a Body Slam here just to get some chip damage. As long as I can start getting um, some damage off on this Hippowdon, it'll make it easier to take out later. As he actually ends up going for the Roar. It does me a favor because in comes 50% Shark, half a Shark, but full power motherfucker. He's going to go ahead and uh, obviously take some Stealth Rock damage and the Sandstorm. And then I have a Life Orb, so I'm just out here beating myself up all day. But... Uh, I decided to go for a liquidation here. The reason is because obviously I don't have anything else to do. Um, and I believe it is a roll to knock out this Hippowdon depending on its set. It is pretty damn defensive. And unfortunately he does live that. Also, he's hungry and ends up eating a berry too. Which doesn't really matter. It's still in range uh, for anything to take care of it now. As he goes for the Earthquake and I end up losing Sharpedo early. That kind of seems like the theme lately. But with the team I'm using, I really don't have any switch-ins to things. It, it, it really... It makes things difficult there. So I lose Shar Sharpedo early. So, I mean, I'm talking early as hell. That would have been so nice to have that thing around, uh, especially for Pokemon like the Espeon. I can outspeed after speed boost and hit him with a crunch. Um, it's great for the Blaziken if I can kind of stay on top of his speed boost. But yeah, that kind of is a bummer there. So now I, I had a couple options of who I want to switch in here. I end up going into Frostitute, the OG. She is back and she's better than ever, boys. Um, so I can't really, I, I decide not to go for the Lovely Kiss. I'm just going to go right for an Ice Beam. I can't really let him get too much momentum if I end up missing a Lovely Kiss or something like that. So I just go right for the Ice Beam. It is going to take care of the Hippo. And that's good to see. You know, now I, I, I take care of the big defense wall. Um, that kind of, that thing kind of did what it needed to do in terms of taking out Charpedo and getting up Stealth Rock. But it's gone, and we don't have to worry about Hungry Ass Hippo anymore. So, Frostitude has the same issue. We take a bunch of Stealth Rock damage and Life Orb and Sandstorm. And then he ends up switching into the Espeon here. So, another Pokemon I cannot switch well into. Um, one of my more defensive Pokemon being Muck as my special defense wall. Obviously cannot bring in on Espeon. Uh, so, I'm in a little bit of a tough spot here again. And the momentum is definitely building up on the opponent side. But that's alright. I'm going I'm to go right for an Ice Beam here. Maybe I can catch him going for screens. I'm uh, predicting a switch or something. But he just goes right for the Shadow Ball. Throws the old slow balls at my face. And down goes the Frostitude. So... Didn't get to do much this match, but she will be back, boys. She'll be back. Don't you worry. Uh, anyway, the good news about this is I can get a free switch into whatever I want. Uh, revenge killing is something this team does relatively well. I can go into Pinsir. I don't want to lock myself into X Scissor on this thing because he does have switch ins to that, like the Blaziken. He's also got the Tentacruel. So I go into Pinsir, take that big stealth rock damage. I actually probably need some hazard control on this team. That'd be nice. But here's where I'm going to go ahead and make a risky play. I figure I'm down early. I got to try to make some plays here. I'm going to click Earthquake. Reason being is because obviously the X Scissor is going to be expected. If I go into Pinsir there, it's obviously also Choice Scarf, so he knows I'm Scarf. Um, and I go for the Earthquake. He actually does end up bringing in the Tentacruel, so the matchup is going to work out well for me here. And I got myself a nice little prediction uh, to kind of to kind of help me out a little bit there. So Dick Pinch is going to absolutely destroy 
that man's dick, and that's going to be a dead tentacruel. So that's great. Uh, X scissor there would have put me in a bad spot. I would have. It, it's a. It's always a risky play there because uh, if if Espeon stays in, Pinsir basically just goes down, and then I'm in a bad spot. But uh, I get some Moxie now. He's able to go into whatever he wants. Decides to go into Blaziken, who looks like it's on its tippy toes. I don't know what's happening with my dude Blaziken here, <laughs> but I'm gonna stay in. Um, of course, again, I don't have anything really that wants to desperately switch into this fella. Um, and also, since I've taken care of the Tentacruel, the only other things that Pinsa would be really nice for would be, I guess, the Lantern and potentially the Lucario, but I have other answers for those as well. So, um, I'm going to kind of weigh my risk and reward here. I could switch directly into Muck. I'm considering, do I save Pinsir? It's a really, it's a tough call. But he went for the Protector, he got the Speed Boost, so even though I am Scarfed, he is going to be faster. Fire punches me right in the face, and down goes the Dick Pinch. But, we got the clean prediction, we don't have to worry about... Uh, the freaking tentacruel anymore, and that's that's pretty great. So, Blaziken's over here speed boosting away, and this is a very scary Pokemon. Blaziken, after a couple speed boosts, there's, you know, there's not much you can do, especially if you don't have any real resist. So, um, I'm deciding now might be the best time to bring in Muck. He's gonna come in and he's gonna be like, "Sup?" He just, uh, you know, he's, he's got his hand up, he's waving hello, and uh, at least I know that I can definitely take a fire punch. Seeing fire punch is actually nice because I know that's probably his highest damage output. Um, on the muck, and I'm considering, do I go for a curse? I think if I curse, I can potentially uh, take two, kill this thing with a poison jab, and then have some pretty hard-hitting shadow snakes to come later. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. He stays in, goes right for the fire punch, uppercut right to the face, uh, but that's actually fine. I take that nicely, as now I get that defense and attack boost. Uh, after Black Sledge recovery, I will definitely be able to take another one. So muck is back to doing the things that it used to do for me many, many years ago. Throwback to the people who remember this team. If you, if you do remember any of the Pokemon on this team, uh, you've definitely been around this channel forever. But yeah, so he gets another speed boost and this is about the fastest chicken on this side of the Mississippi, but that is fine. We don't give a shit about speed. I'm gonna go right for a poison jab. After that defense boost, I can easily take another fire punch. Well, maybe not easily, but I leave it with 16. <laughs> uh, and he takes some life over recoil. One more poison jab here is going to take care of the Blaziken, which is another huge threat out of the way. And Muck is actually set up to do some damage here. Um, not a lot of people know what these Pokemon are going to really do, so I'm really hoping he decides to go into Espeon here to just outspeed and kill me with a Psychic, because they never expect the Shadow Sneak. He does end up going into the Espeon, who looks like he got a great matchup against my big pile of shit here, but as you're going to see, a plus one Shadow Sneak is going to uh, is gonna, is gonna, is gonna catch you for a surprise. So I go for the Shadow Sneak here. I'm really hoping this kills. If this kills, I can, I can be in a great spot. Unfortunately, it does live that. I think that actually may have been a roll as well. Um, but a Psychic does take care of Muck, although I did what I needed to do. Uh, I got some great damage off on the Espeon. I was kind of hoping for a Poison Touch there as well. I have the Poison Touch ability, so anytime you make physical contact, uh, you have a chance of poisoning them. But it would have been great if I was able to take care of that thing, just because then I could have a hard-hitting Shadow Sneak on whatever comes in next. But the game is not lost at this point, boys. I've got Titty Milk. I've got the Doug Trio in the back. Um, at this point, I'm starting to realize that my win condition is going to be that Doug Trio. Um, if I can, if I can get Doug Trio in safely against their last three Pokemon, I think I can win this. So I decided to go with the Miltank here just to kind of play it safe. I could have gone Doug Trio early and just Earthquaked, but I figure Miltank is just an easier play here. I can finish this thing off with a uh, Body Slam. And it hits me with a Psychic, but I'm too damn thick. Look at the thickness of this cow. He's taking that Psychic like no problem, and. Um, now he's down to two Pokemon. He's got the Lucario and he has the Lantern. So for the past couple turns, um, I've been weighing my options and realizing that my win condition is going to be my Doug Trio. Uh, being able to outspeed and then hitting hard with a Choice Bandit Earthquake should be able to take care of both of these Pokemon. So now he decides to go into Lucario. I'm just going to click Body Slam because I'm obviously not going to switch out here. I'm just going to let him kill me with a Close Combat. Give him your utter massage and he massages me too hard so that's going to kill me. But Everything is coming into play here. Now imagine this. It's late at night. You walk down an alley. You're thinking, hmm, this looks like a nice alley. Boom. All of a sudden, gangster hot dogs pop right in front of you, and then you're about to get beat the fuck up. So Thug Trio comes out, <laughs> ready to lay down some damage here. Um, Choice Bandit Earthquake should be easily be able to take care of this thing. I'm glad to have Stealth Rock up in case it was Sash or something like that. I know he's going to be working with Bullet Punch, but at full health, I can easily take at least one of those. And a little ground pound action is going to take care of the Lucario. Choice Banded Doug Trio is one of the best revenge killers in the game. I know I say that about Alakazam, but Doug Trio's got to be my second favorite. Plus, 
with Arena Trap, you can uh, you can do a lot of great revenge switching when uh, it doesn't allow them to switch out. So, in comes Lantern, who looks to be flying a little too high for my liking. I I'm not, don't know why my guy is so damn high in the air. Uh, but that's not that is not a factor. He still, in fact, gets hurt by the Earthquake. Uh, Choice Bandit Earthquake should be able to take care of it, and that does knock out the fish. So that is going to be the end of the match there. It came down to my last Pokemon. Keeping the Doug Trio in the back is amazing. Sometimes you just got to keep a couple hot dogs in your back pocket just in case you get uh, caught in a pinch. So that is going to be the end of the match, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this one. And a lot of fun building some new teams. I'm bringing back some of the OGs. Uh, leave a comment uh, if you remember any of these Pokemon, or if you have any recommendations on Pokemon that I should use, because uh, I'm having a good time here kind of mixing up. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys later. Peace out.